What's up, y'all? Gonna try to do a little bit of fishing this morning, see if we can catch something before it gets too hot to do anything except burn and die. Hey, hey, down here. There you go. So here's a good spot behind us right here. I love these rocks. Loads of rocks here provide great places for the fish to hide. They provide these little coves for them to move back into, kind of shoal little fish into shallow water and trap them. And then if we stand right over here by these rocks, we've got this parallel line of sight right up and down the edge of the, the man-made structure that is uh, what forms the bank. So this dramatic drop off of this concrete wall right here. So really good spot. So. Let's go. Change of lure. Not out of desperation, out of necessity. I got hung up on the last one, but a little spinner did the trick quite nicely. A little flash on there in the sun. We got this guy. Nice looking little fish. Not a monster, but I mean, I'm not always fishing for monsters. Sometimes you just want to see a fish. And that is a gorgeous looking animal right there. A lot of dark patterning on this guy. Dark on the top of his head. Just dark going down the flanks. Just a really gorgeous mix of colors. That was the thing. I used to not really enjoy fishing for bass. Um, I always liked fishing for white bass and like sand bass and stuff like that. But not so much largemouth. Uh, and it was really getting a close look at just how colorful they are and how brilliant that green is on their body. That changed my mind. There he goes, get him revived. Just give him a moment. Alright, so the camera did overheat, so we decided to change locations, which is why I was filming my feet walking, because how are you supposed to know I went somewhere if I don't do that? So I came out here, this is a spot you've seen before, but it's always got lots of shade around it, so I know the camera's going to last. Lots of cicadas or cicadas active, lots of ducks, lots of egrets, and lots of tilapia. But uh, that's not what we're fishing for, there's tilapia everywhere. If I had a handful of bread, we'd already have some. What I'm going to do instead is uh, jig this right off the edge of that overpass, that culvert there, and see if we can't get a bass to rush out and ambush this little guy. You stay there. That was not expected. This was not expected, but I am so pleased right now. Not a bass, a crappie. Look at that. Fantastic. Fantastic, wonderful fish. Oh, so happy right now. I've not caught a crappie out of this little stretch before, so not a new species for me, but a new species for this stretch of water. God, that is just wonderful. So pleased to have that. He was hiding right under that. Uh, it's a little bit of moss and uh, some some water lilies, tiny ones. It's kind of growing out over the edge, forming a shelf. He was hiding right under that. There you go. Look at those colors in the sun. Just make sure he's in focus. Sometimes the camera does not like to focus on fish. There you go. Beautiful guy. Let's put him back.
very large school of sunfish. And I can even see a small bass right there. Just right there. Actually, I'm going to cast right across them from here just to see what happens. That bass might be just big enough to get hooked on this lure. Yep. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> yes. Sight casting to bass. And I'm not even near the water's edge. Gotta love that. Look at that lure. Just imitates a small fish and just gets swallowed so easily. And you know, I love this. It's so wonderful. You can hear all these cars around me and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a lot of the times, it can be a bit frustrating. You know, you're trying to get quality audio and all that kind of stuff. You're trying to talk to the camera and big 18-wheeler zooms by. But at the end of the day, the point of this show is to do a couple of things. Number one, at the end of the day, it's a wildlife conservation education program. Quotations, because when I say program, I think of quality, quality television, not necessarily YouTube, although there are some YouTube channels that have reached that mark. So yes, conservation education is the, always going to be the, the main part of that. My favorite way of showing my favorite animal group is by fishing. I'm not a dive, you know, I'm not certified to dive. I couldn't take you into a coral reef. And even if we were dive certified, you wouldn't be able to see anything in there. Although I can see a bass from up here. So yeah, showing beautiful wildlife, which I'm going to go let go real quick. providing entertainment and trying to get people involved in fishing that otherwise might not have thought it was something that they would want to do or could do. That first part is easy. You know, you get people excited about fishing. They want to go get it a try. They don't know anything about it. So you provide them with a little bit of information and more than anything, um, I love sharing with people how accessible it is. You know, fishing is so easy. You don't need a lot of money. This rod and reel together costs probably $80 at the most. This line costs a few dollars, got it on sale. These little jig heads, you can buy these for 99 cents. You know, pennies, pennies in the long run, and I've had this forever. And you can catch gorgeous animals like that. And look, there's another one right there I'm gonna cast to. I walk off the street, I park at a swimming pool, I walk across the street with my cheap rig, I cast. And let's see if I can get him. Yep, got him. And look at that. That is accessibility right there. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I always love watching, you know, videos of somebody taking a private boat off to a volcanic island and catching giant trevally. But at the end of the day, most people who are interested in starting fishing uh, they're not going to be able to do that, but this right here you can do so easily. And no, that is not a giant trevally, but it is every bit as beautiful and just as cool. That definitely paid off. For this water, that is a good sized fish. Nicely hooked right through the roof of the mouth too. There's no way he's getting away from that. Never leave home without him, kids. Either a pair of pliers or a good pair of forceps. Not that it requires a tremendous amount of force to remove hooks, but a lot of the times you just gotta get your, your fulcrum point at an angle your hands can't get to. Those needle nose pliers can. Beautiful bass. This is about as big as they tend to get in this little stretch of water. Wow, wonderful animal. He's fat too, no doubt. These other little guys have nowhere to, nowhere to hide. Interesting thing I've noticed about every fish I've caught out here so far, is they all have little stab marks. Being in this shallow water that's so narrow, they hardly ever get a chance to get out. You know, they are prime targets for better fishermen than me, these birds out here. What a fantastic looking fish. Took that white curly tail jig 
actually he took it coming towards me. I didn't realize he was on it first, and then he he darted off another direction. Wonderful. Let's get him back. Fantastic. So pleased to have this. Just a wonderful looking fish. God, they're so pretty. These bass are so pretty. Let's put him back. Woo! Feisty too. Oh, wait, hang on, you didn't see that. There we go, in frame that time. All right, it's midday. It's getting really hot outside. I think we're gonna call it quits. Good day of fishing. Uh, you know, got a couple of good bass, got a good crappie. Couldn't be happier. You know, fishing at the end of the day there are so many good reasons to go fishing. It's, um, you know, it connects you with, with wildlife. Um, it shows you where food for very many people might come from or how they might get it. Uh, it connects you with uh, the concept of, uh, you know, food sustainability. You get to understand an ecosystem, uh, you know, food webs that kind of are the structure of the ecosystem, forces you to get outdoors, it's exercise, and it's just loads of fun. So, wonderful start to my day. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more bass fishing. Uh, I've got a couple of trips planned later this year, or throughout this year, for different species of fish. Uh, if you want to see more bass fishing, let me know. We'll go to some bass hot spots throughout Texas to get some better bass than the, you know, the little tillers that we have here in our ditches. Um, if you want more shark videos, we'll do more shark videos. You know, this really is just prime time for fish, you know, midsummer in Texas. It, it's brutal, it's brutal, but lots of great fish to be had. So tell me what you want, we'll make it happen. Get outside, go fishing, and I'll catch you guys later.